Hi, it's Katrina. From underground tunnels causing buildings to collapse to a lost Colosseum found, here are 10 amazing archaeological discoveries from ancient Rome. Number 10. Underground Labyrinth Beneath modern-day Rome, there is a maze of tunnels and quarries dating all the way back to the ancient city's beginnings. Several years ago, out of a concern that ground-level buildings and other structures would collapse into the voids below, experts embarked on a mission to map out this ancient subterranean labyrinth. Their concerns were certainly justified. Between just 2011 and 2013, there were 83 recorded incidents of structures collapsing into the tunnels. The scientists operated with the goal of preventing future collapses into a quarry system that Roman citizens have a long history of taking into their own hands. The common way is to take some big plastic bags and fill them with cement and stick them in the holes, geoscientist Giuseppina Caesar told Life Science. Rome was built mainly upon a type of volcanic rock called tuff, which is strong and easy to mine. Early Roman architects relied heavily on it in their projects, but they were sophisticated in their techniques, including keeping the quarry's tunnels narrow enough for the buildings above them to remain supported. But the subsequent generations widened the tunnels, and Mother Nature took an inevitable toll on the rock once it was exposed to air. After the quarrying stopped, Rome's residents repurposed the labyrinth several times, using the tunnels as catacombs, for mushroom farming, as a sewer, and even as a bomb shelter during World War II. Using 3D laser scanning, Kaiser and her colleagues identified weak areas in the tunnels and physically entered portions that were deemed safe. City government officials had compromised areas filled with mortar rather than simply patched up. This may seem extreme, but it's also necessary. As Kaiser said, a crack never stops on its own. It always gets bigger. Number 9. St. Valentine's Skull St. Valentine of Terni, known as the patron saint of couples for defending Christian marriage, was beaten and decapitated on February 14th sometime during the 3rd century. This event inspired what we now know as Valentine's Day, a holiday that revolves around romance and love. What many people don't know, besides the fact that Valentine's Day stemmed from the beheading of a saint, is that the first version of this holiday was a feast celebrating St. Valentine's execution. Historian Lisa Bittell explained that there were several St. Valentines who were supposedly executed on February 14th, including two that died during the reign of Emperor Claudius Gothicus in 269 to 270 AD, during one of the most brutal periods of Christian persecution. The Valentine who died during the 3rd century was the first to be executed. Little else is known about the other two Valentines. Legend holds there was a Valentinus who lived before the 3rd century Valentine and died in Africa, but evidence of these claims is scarce. Today, the minor basilica of Santa Maria in Cosmedin, near Rome's Circus Maximus, claims to house the skull of the 3rd century Saint Valentine. Located in what was once a Greek community within Rome, the basilica's construction began during the 8th century atop the ruins of a Roman temple. It is unclear how St. Valentine's remains reached the Byzantine church after reportedly being uncovered in Rome during the early 19th century. Other churches throughout Europe claim to house relics of the other Valentines, but the alleged authenticity of these and the 3rd century skull is hard to determine. Number 8. Eisenoi Coins Turkey is home to many famous ancient cities and archaeological sites, so it takes something really rare to surprise archaeologists. While working in Eisenoi, an ancient Greek city in western Turkey's Kutaya province in September 2019, Archaeologists unearthed a hoard of Roman-era silver coins in a jug buried near a stream. Dating back roughly 2,100 years, there were 651 coins, consisting of 439 ancient Roman denarii, as well as 212 silver coins known as Sistophori, from the ancient Greek city of Pergamum, located in modern-day northwestern Turkey. All the coins date back to between 75 BC and 4 BC, Many were minted in southern Italy and bear portraits of various Roman emperors, including Caesar, Brutus, Mark Antony, and Augustus Young. The backs of the coins feature various scenes, including one depicting the Trojan hero Aeneas, an ancestor of the legendary twins Romulus and Remus, who founded the city of Rome. Eisenoi is home to one of the best-preserved temples dedicated to Zeus, and just last year, archaeologists began restoration work on the ancient city. 
In an interview with Live Science, Elif Ozer, who participated in the excavation, explained that it's likely a high-ranking soldier came to Azanoi, and he must have buried these coins here for a reason we do not know yet. He and his team are working on making a riverboat project so visitors can explore the historical ruins on sailboats, just like the Romans did thousands of years ago. Number 7. Ancient Pay Stub Around 1,900 years ago, a Roman soldier named Gaius Messius received a pay stub detailing how he was broke after having his wages docked for certain items. Written on papyrus, the slip reveals that Messius, who participated in the Siege of Masada, one of the final battles of the First Jewish-Roman War, received just 50 denarii after paying for barley, food, clothing, and military equipment. Messias was likely stationed at the Masada Fortress in the Judean Desert between 72 and 75 AD. One of the soldier's deductions was for livestock fodder, indicating to experts that he may have been a legionary cavalryman who traveled with an animal he was responsible for feeding. His unit remains unknown. All that's known of Gaius Messias is what researchers have gleaned from the pay stub that left him effectively penniless. Joseph Flavius, the only known historical source for the Siege of Masada, wrote that the Jewish rebels who had initially tried to stand up against the Romans committed mass suicide once they were surrounded. It's unknown whether this is true, and some experts question the validity of this narrative. Designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2001, the site's ruins are one of Israel's most popular tourist destinations. Number 6. The Tomb of Romulus Last year, archaeologists found what might possibly be the underground tomb of Rome's mythical founder, Romulus, beneath the ancient city's forum. Surrounded by a temple or a hypogeum, the subterranean burial is thought to date back to the 6th century BC. The four-and-a-half-foot-long stone sarcophagus the tomb contains was found empty, despite ancient Romans' belief that it held Romulus's remains. Inside the chamber, which contains a hidden entrance located northwest of the Forum, is a votive altar dedicated to Romulus. Speaking with the media, Colosseum Archaeological Park Director Alfonsina Russo, who oversees the city's ruins, explained the tomb's entrance is located under a building known as the Casa Julia, or Senate House. The tomb itself is situated beneath the Comitium, Rome's central meeting place for votes by public assembly. Also near the tomb is a shrine called the Lapis Niger, or the Black Stone. Paved with black marble, it was thought to cause bad luck. The alleged site where jealous Senate members supposedly murdered Romulus is marked by the stone block. Some historians do not think that Romulus ever existed, despite legendary claims that he lived during the 8th century BC. According to the story, Romulus and his twin brother Remus were the grandsons of Numitor, the deposed king of the Latin city of Alba Longa, their father was the god Mars, and their mother was Numitor's daughter, Rhea Silvia. Romulus and Remus were abandoned on the bank of the Tiber River, where a she-wolf found them and raised them until a shepherd rescued them. The pair went on to become quite successful, restoring Numitor to the throne and building a city overlooking the site where they were found as infants. The problem was that the twins didn't really get along. When the brothers could not agree on where exactly that was, Romulus and his supporters killed Remus before establishing Rome on Palatine Hill. Number 5. Nijmegen Helbet During the 1st or 2nd century AD, a Roman warrior passed through what is now the Dutch city of Nijmegen and left his helmet behind. Rediscovered in 1915 in a gravel bed on the bank of the Wall River, the helmet was given the name of the town. This iron mask covered in bronze and silver was used by elite members of the Roman cavalry. It's equipped with a neck-protecting shield of bronze and silver and has a diadem, or a crown, featuring two male and three female figures. The Nijmegen helmet is just one of several Roman cavalry sports helmets that have been found throughout the area and elsewhere. At first, everyone thought these were just for parades and mock battles. I mean, this seems like it would be very hot and uncomfortable to wear in a real battle. However, a similar helmet to this one was found on a battlefield site among the debris, and another royal Roman tombstone found in Germany also had a man wearing this type of helmet. While not everyone wore these helmets, it's possible that a select few would wear these ornate masked helmets to show off a more symbolic role of power that would inspire the troops and strike fear in the hearts of the enemy. Another famous cavalry helmet is the Crosby Garrett helmet. Dating back to the 1st or 2nd century, the copper alloy headgear was discovered in 2010 by a metal detectorist in Cumbria, England. This site was once a Roman farming settlement located near a Roman road and army fort. 
leading experts to believe that the helmet may have belonged to a local resident who served in the Roman army. The mask helmet was in pristine condition with wonderful detail. A curator at the British Museum described it as an immensely interesting and outstandingly important find. Its face mask is both extremely finely wrought and chillingly striking. It is a find of the greatest national and indeed international significance. While it may be important, it was made from a metal alloy of copper, zinc, and tin, so it did not qualify as a treasure. It was put up for auction, and while several museums scrambled to get the money together to purchase it, they were outbid by a private buyer who paid £2.3 million. Number 4. Golden Ring In mid-2018, metal detectorist Jason Massey discovered a Roman gold signet ring in the modern-day English town of Crewkern in Somerset. Dating back to sometime between 200 and 300 AD, the ring bears a black onyx featuring an engraving of the Roman god of victory driving two horses. After finding a stash of around 60 coins that day with the Detecting for Veterans group, Massey spotted what he initially thought was a gold coin contained among the hoard. It was the gold ring. There's a load of figures floating about for the value of the ring, but we're interested in the villa, who's lived there and where they've come from, and who the person was that wore this ring, Massey told the BBC. Whoever owned the ring was likely at least fairly wealthy, according to the Fiance liaison officer, who said there are a couple of gold rings of that sort of date from Somerset, but they are not common. Number 3. Colosseum in Turkey? Archaeologists working in western Turkey's province of Trales recently discovered an amphitheater similar to Rome's Colosseum. The structure, which remains mostly buried, represents a unique example of Eastern Roman architecture in the country. After finding the arena in the ancient city of Mastara, scientists dug up its outer walls. Around 80% of Mastara is buried, and archaeologists have only uncovered a small portion of it, but they believe that the structure is a rare discovery. This might be the only arena preserved in its entirety here in Turkey, explained Umut Tunser, head of the Directorate of Culture and Tourism in Aden. The preservation was maintained as it was buried for years. The basic outline is visible now, and we plan to unearth more this spring. The newly discovered amphitheater is the only one found in Turkey so far that isn't collapsed or destroyed. It rivals the size of the Colosseum, which measures 617 feet long and 512 feet wide and is also ovular in shape like the Colosseum. Mastara was built and rebuilt several times over by the Spartans, Phrygians, Ionians, Lydians, Persians, and finally the ancient Romans, who left behind fascinating archaeological ruins that reflect what everyday life was like 1800 years ago. Number 2. Rome's First Migrants Sometime between the 1st and 3rd centuries AD, a group of four migrants traveled to Rome during its imperial era, when the city was a flourishing metropolis. But who were these people? Up to a million people were living there, biological anthropologist Christina Kilgrove told Life Science, adding the population ebbed and flowed, you had people who were migrating in, and you had people who were dying and people who were migrating out. Kilgrove further explained that while historians estimate that around 40% of ancient Rome's population consisted of slaves, no such records exist to verify this theory. She searched two cemeteries just outside Rome's walls for signs of these people. Working with colleague Janet Montgomery of Durham University, Kilgrove analyzed the isotopes in the molars of 105 corpses, which provides a record of what a person ate and drank during their early years of life. Teeth are like little time capsules in your mouth. The results revealed that two men died between ages 35 and 50, an older man lived past the age of 50, and a teenager passed away when they were somewhere between 11 and 15 years old. The isotope analyses show that these four individuals almost certainly came from elsewhere. The four individuals represent the first people identified as migrants to the region during the Roman Imperial Era. A few of the men came from places with much older rocks than the young volcanic rocks that are found throughout much of Italy, as evidenced by high levels of certain strontium isotopes. The nearest old rocks to the site would be in the Alps, or on certain islands in the Tyrrhenian Sea. Additionally, the oxygen isotope analysis indicates that the men could have been from the Alps or somewhere else with a similar climate. The low strontium isotope levels in the adolescents suggest that they came from an environment rich in young limestones or basalt. Meanwhile, the high oxygen isotopes indicate that the person came from a hot climate, perhaps North Africa. It is still too hard to say whether these people were slaves or not. Number 1. 
Rome's Lost Roads As technology advances, it's becoming easier for researchers to spot archaeological ruins and artifacts that might not be visible to the naked eye, including buried sites and structures that are only easily seen from a bird's eye view. The ancient Romans built an impressive road network throughout Britain after conquering the territory during the first century. While there are some surviving segments of these highways, they have largely disappeared from plain sight. In 2016, archaeologists and other experts detected what they believe may be remnants of Roman roads throughout northern England's countryside. Retired road engineer David Ratledge spent considerable time examining 18 years' worth of maps that the UK's Environment Agency compiled using a remote sensing technique called LIDAR. These 3D maps enable the viewer to see below vegetation and other obstructive features. In doing so, Ratledge identified what he believes is an 11-mile-long lost route between Ribchester and Lancaster. Additionally, the UK Environment Agency revealed in a statement that archaeologists Hugh Toller and Bryn Gethin identified four Roman roads, including a missing part of the Maiden Way, which connected the Roman fort of Bravoniacum to that of Magnae, the latter of which was situated along Hadrian's Wall. Discoveries like this highlight the efficiency and importance of technologies like LIDAR, which enable experts to look beneath the surface without actually digging. Thanks for watching! Have you ever been to Rome? Let me know in the comments below and remember to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. See you soon! Bye!